Hello guys, so let me welcome you to a <laughs> follow-up of uh, Tomb Raider Anniversary stream. Now, I've unfortunately had to change locations, so I don't really have the same streaming setup as I had with the help of my friend yesterday. But, you know, <laughs> we do what we can under improvised conditions. Nevertheless, I'm hoping to kind of pick up where we left off, minus the existential questions, yeah? <laughs> so, I will actually try to tackle within the next two hours as many Tomb Raider anniversary levels as I can within the time trial. Now, since I don't have the same setup, uh, I'm kind of trying to see the chat on my phone. Hopefully that will work out fine. And if not, from time to time I will just minimize the game to <laughs> look at what you guys have been saying. Okay, so without further ado, let me just choose the St. Francis Folly and of course it will be the uh, the classical outfit Lara. That's that's really the only way to do these things. Okay, there we are and let me just check something very important if we have the sunglasses, cheat and show enemy health on. Wonderful. Okay, great. Now I think for what's up ahead, shotgun would be a good choice. Yes, indeed. Whoa! Usually it's a good idea to use the shotgun for enemies you can kill with two blows. Natla doesn't honor her contracts, Pierre. I'd move on if I were you. No, mademoiselle. Natla and I understand each other. I find things for her, and she rewards me handsomely. But you see the very thing she does. That is why you... Are not trusted. I trust my instincts. And that is why you are not so complex. I am professional, mademoiselle. I focus on the job, and I get paid. There's more to life than money, Pierre. This isn't life, mademoiselle. It's business. Your compulsion prevents you from seeing the difference. It hasn't prevented me from getting a piece of the skill. How's business for you? To shame. So then, why don't we see whose compulsion gets them the next piece? I love this dialogue exchange. I remember that in the original Tomb Raider 1, this was this very annoying shootout with Invincible Pierre, you know, hiding behind columns. And you actually... You were forced to... Well, pretty much injure him and then let him go, let him run away, you know, in several parts across the Greece. He was just the ultimate troll. But here they actually decided to incorporate it into the story, a very smart decision, I think. Or maybe an interesting boss fight would have been another thing, or a QTE, but... I don't know, it feels like Pierre has much the more character just conversing with Lara. Okay, now I believe I've memorized this pattern, so we don't have to check it. For the interest of time, let's see... Okay... Now I wish I would be playing the V version of Anniversary. Perfect! My memory serves me still. Okay. And if I'm not mistaken, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe this is the longest level in the entire game, at least according to the time we are given within the time trial. Okay. Now we can push this thing forward, but I believe there's a faster way of getting it to move, and that is simply shooting at it. It's not very fast, but I believe it is still faster than when Lara just pushes it forward. Perfect. No, open. Thank you. Okay, now we need to get up again. This shouldn't be too much of an issue. Okay. I'll be honest, I feel very insecure playing St. Francis Folly, because from out of the Tomb Raider anniversary, I think it's the least linear level. You can tackle the challenge rooms in the main hall in pretty much any order you like. Of course, traversing them indicates that one way is a bit more convenient than the other. Nevertheless, uh, whenever I was practicing for this, I always did it in a different way. <laughs> I'm just kind of worried that the one I'm gonna choose this time is not gonna be too efficient. But there are more kitty cats over here. Whoa! Uh oh I was hoping we could avoid that, but... Oh, whatever. Okay. 
let's get this out of the hole and move it with our guns. I kind of wish there would be an option to choose kind of this 1996 skin for all the characters, not just Lara. To see Pierre, Larson, Natla, uh, Cold and Kit, you know, uh, with the 90s version. I think that would add a lot of charm. Oh heck, maybe even all the enemies. Wouldn't that be great? Just to see blocky gorillas, crocodiles. And it is very impressive how the game is able to load all the all the levels within one geographical location into one map. Basically, it's a seamless transition from one level to the other. I remember that's always really impressed me when I was playing the game. And I think it's made possible by the long passages, like the one we just passed through. It, allow it gives the game time to load a bit. Okay. Now, let me just uh, scratch my memory muscles over here. Okay. I think we should get the lever at the very top over here first. Enjoy your coffee, by the way. I'm already drinking one here. Poseidon. I think that's actually the longest challenge, so I might want to tackle that first. Although it's not particularly difficult, just time-consuming. But time is the name of the game during time trials. Okay, and... Uh, oh dear, now what? Okay, let me go down like this. Because there's a target we can hit. It will extend the platform indefinitely. Oh no, I just blocked that pillar. I went to bring it down with grapple and the platform blocked it. Can we shoot it again? Nope. Well, that ship has sailed. Okay. That's that's no biggie. Uh, we can pull the lever over here. Using the column we just brought down. I'm gonna pick up the health pack. It costs us like a fraction of a second. Careful, Lara. And this kind of helps me keep track of which levers we pulled and which ones not, if I'll remember that the top tier has been taken care of. Hephaestus. I remember this was incorrectly labeled in Tomb Raider 1. I think they used Thor as the expression. And that, that was the most confusing thing ever. They did not even mistake it with a Roman Vulcan. They just went full on Nordic. <laughs> Which is really a cute mistake to make. Or maybe it was intentional, maybe there was some hidden genius behind the naming, but uh, yeah, I, I really don't think so. Now where are we on that? We could actually do Hephaestus right now, it's the most top door over here. Okay, let's see if this traversal will work. Every time I play this level, I do it in a completely different order. Ah, keeps things fresh. I really need to come up with the most efficient way to do it. Okay. So, Hephaestus, let's see what you prepared for us. Now, this is actually interesting. E each of these uh, challenge rooms has these antechambers, and each of them is a puzzle in its own right. For example, this door is malfunctioning, just pretty much a drop down, always makes me laugh. And. Uh, Thankfully we have these ledges to get around it, but usually there are different things and mechanisms to get around that. Oh, I remember this was such a scary part in the original game, because the way the lightning hit Lara was pretty much completely randomized. Here the game actually tells you, via the raised platforms, where Lara should not stand, because she might get hit. Now she was invincible because of the cutscene, very convenient. Okay, now we need to... We have one statue over here, we have two stone blocks which we are gonna turn into statues. Using the magical hammer. Okay, so first of all... <laughs> I love this instantaneous transition. Lara's hands must be really wobbly right now. Okay, let me just leave it here. First, let's get to the top and get a third statue. It's so cool you can climb the hammer. Okay. Secret on our left, by the way, in case you are collecting those. And there we go. And actually, we don't even need to use Hephaestus's hammer to turn this into a perfect replica of the statue below. It just needs to fall down. 
I guess it's like a stone cask that opens when it's cracked or something. Like, uh, like a Kinder Surprise Egg or something. Okay. Now, not only you have to put them in place, but also align them perfectly. Well, not entirely perfectly, but just facing inwards. Okay. I love the mosaic on the floor, showing Hephaestus. These are such great details. Okay, and a third one. We are down to 25 minutes, however I believe last time I managed to finish the level with 6 minutes remaining. They give you a lot of lenience in this level, realizing how long and confusing it is. Okay, and we just need to let the hammer strike again. That opens it up. Now, unfortunately, this does not deactivate the lighting trap at the top. That would have been convenient, but alas. Oh, quick. Nice. Okay. I may be wondering how we're gonna get through this door. There are no ledges for us to really hold on to on the sides. And... We pretty much just have to time our jump up correctly, once it starts falling down. Thankfully you do get sound cues, just like that. Okay. And that's it. And each time you complete one of these challenges, thankfully there's a checkpoint, but unfortunately you have to watch this cutscene of an extended platform, meaning... Well, if you die shortly after, it will take away some of your time from you. Now over there we have Atlas, but we haven't found a lever for that yet. Okay, so I think we just need to go down. Oh, I see Poseidon. Let's see if we can access that. Huh, how do I... I feel like I have to reinvent the wheel each time I think about how to reach this. Ah, so from the bottom. Okay, got it. Okay, I see another... Oh, extendable platform. That can only help us, right? Ah, yeah, that's how we'll reach Poseidon. Well, you know what? In this case, let me just... Can can Lara make the jump? You know what? I'm, I'm gonna give it a go. Whoa! Okay. And then there's the final lever at the very bottom, but we can descend safely. Yeah, I believe this really saved up a lot of time. Okay. Ah, so 10 years between playing the original and Anniversary, yeah. So, you actually played Anniversary on release? Nice. I, I think I mentioned this uh, during the stream yesterday, but um, I was completely unaware that Anniversary was released. At least where I'm from, where I'm in, uh, it had little to no marketing. So I learned about it like a year and a half later, and I was just mind blown. That's how I picked up my PSP version, <laughs> my first experience with it. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, let, let's do Poseidon. Ah, you try to play all the classic one classics once a year. That's a very nice tradition. <laughs> I usually do that every four years or so, but still, uh, uh, that means I'm still able to, you know, stay in touch with the classical ones. Okay, and now we have a choice if we just want to time our jump up correctly or use one of these platforms on the side. I think it's actually quicker to stay on the grade, but, you know, variety is the spice of life. Ah, you've become a pro at them. Yeah, I believe that. Actually, one of the great things about the classic games, uh, with their really blocky, square-ish engine, is how predictable Lara's behavior is. and Which means you can really practice and master getting better and better at it. Unlike the Crystal Dynamics games, anything can happen in this engine, I feel. Okay. And there we are, Poseidon's Challenge. I remember that in the original, this was just one tunnel. You swam from point A to point B without drowning, and that was the entirety of the challenge. I'm really happy they decided to rework it. 
Okay. So we have two f very creepy fish statues with which we can control the water levels. Okay, meaning we can reach the platform over here, drop down the block and then later use it to block one of the fish. Now there should also be an underwater lever. Ah, there we go. There's also another one at the very bottom that we can pull now, but that reveals a secret and those I've already collected in this save file. We're doing this for the time, not for a completion. Which actually really personally hurts me as a completionist. Like, I feel this compulsive need to find all items, kill all enemies, that sort of thing, and of course find all the secrets. Okay. Actually, talking about dives, Lara is able to do that even in this version of the game. Let me show you a swan dive. Woo! Uh, unfortunately, the midair flips, uh, that's not really an option. Yeah. But I think they were introduced in Tomb Raider 2, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think Lara was able to do midair flips while swan diving in Tomb Raider 1. I remember when I learned that, and I was exploring Lara's mansion. Uh, I, of course, finished the level with Lara swan diving to her death from the top of the mansion roof. Because that's really the only way to go. Okay, and this is an interesting puzzle actually in its own right because you can see several platforms over the top You kind of need to get it into the correct quarter, which is over here However, there is rubble blo blocking you at the bottom and also in the middle So you need to do that as you control the world levels once you figure it out. It's very easy. But it's a fun little idea Okay, now let's not let it get blocked by the platform above. Let's put it into this quarter Okay. Now, how do we get... Ah, the same way we entered. Got it. Okay. And now bringing the water here. We should be able to maneuver the platform a bit more. Okay, now just to get into a more advantageous position, let me see. Uh, ha -ha. Ah, they should do the trick, nicely. Okay, and we pretty much want to keep it in this quadrant, we just want the water level to rise again. Uh, let me see. Oh, right, we use that fish statue to do the job, not this one. So this should flood the area with Lara still in it. Whoa, imagine hitting your head like that, that'd be nasty. Okay, and that's it. We are where we want it to be, and... <sighs> physics. We can get behind the grate. I can't help but wonder what would Lara do in case all these traps and mechanisms wouldn't be broken in the particular way the level designers intended them to be. Imagine just being unable to get through something and being stuck. Will Lara bring a load of dynamite, I wonder? Okay. And sometimes even when I think about the significance of some artifacts, if I remember correctly in Tomb Raider 2, which I should, being my most favorite one, uh, I think the entire reason why the wrecked ship Maria Doria has sunk was because the Tibetan monks sabotaged it, because uh, Italian Mafia carried the golden idol, the Seraph, uh, on, uh, on the ship. And there's a whole expedition searching for the mysterious Seraph, you know, to open the door in the Tibetan monastery. The whole cult was pretty much formed to find it to reach the dagger of Xi'an or Jean or how to pronounce it. But the thing is, the Golden Seraph, the reason why so many people had to die in the Tomb Raider story, just opens a small wooden panel in the monastery. Like, that's it. That's literally its only purpose. 
And when I realized this, I was just... Oh, you, you've got to be kidding me. Okay. Uh, interesting that you like the water levels. I also absolutely love them, for the atmosphere especially. And some of the level design is genius. But I've heard actually people say that they are their least favorite ones. So I think it's uh, kind of controversial. People either love them or hate them. I, I, I feel like there's no middle ground. You either have to love them or hate them. And Tomb Raider 3 is actually the first one I have ever played. Uh, it was 99, I believe, uh, the first computer we had. And that was my introduction to the Tomb Raider franchise. I could not make it through the very first level for ages. And you know what? I'm not ashamed of it. The game was very, very tough. So I pretty much just spent my time exploring 3D environment in Lara's Mansion. And I could never figure out where the racetrack key is until we had pretty much internet connection. So I was always wondering what's behind the garden maze, you know? Oh, now this is a new one. Okay, we have to pull the block down. Lara, please cooperate. I know you're a strong girl. Come on. Thank you. Now this is a bit more far than I would have liked. Ah, perfect. Now here's the disappointing thing. You can actually pull the block to the side and uh, keep the gate suspended. And then I was thinking, okay, once we open it from the other side, we will be able to just pass through. Unfortunately not. There's some invisible barrier that prevents you from doing that. It's very annoying. Ah, the Democles challenge room. It's almost identical to the one in Tomb Raider 1, however they... Well, they just made it so much more badass. As you cross this threshold... Boom. This happens. You know things are gonna go very poorly for Lara. And just look at the ceiling. Wow. The sound cues in this game are actually quite amazing. Oof. This is always an awkward one for me. Now, this actually gets much easier since we are not after all the secrets. We can skip some parts of this room. But this is a kind of a necessary step we need to do for us to get out. Whoa! Oh, I love how it cracks the ground. This is so satisfying. You know what? I want to trigger all of them. Well, let's see if I can make it. And survive, of course. The white ones are the safe ones. I like to think the red ones were white as well, but they're just symmetrically drenched in blood. Okay, careful. Now... Uh, I know this is not helping me complete the time trial, but... Ah, screw that, I'm not gonna leave any of these swords hanging. Okay, whoa, and the last one. Oh my god, yes, nice. Okay, and just another lever for us to be able to get over some of these traps. And this opens a way back, a shortcut if you will, but also triggers a checkpoint, which is very important in case I'll just mess up a jump here. Okay. No, Lara, please ignore the column. I know what, I'm gonna take the health back in that case. Not giving me other choice. Okay, and jump back. Thank you. I think I mentioned this yesterday, but I'm still amazed with how well they managed to integrate Grapple into a remake of a 96 game. It's just, wow, really used it to its full potential. Now mind you, it's not magnetic like it was in Legend, which I think was a really cool element. But I mean, it makes sense, it happens about 10 years before the events of Legend. You know, Lars Gear was not, not in top shape, and also when I think about it, there aren't really many magnetic objects. Uh, you know, in these ancient places Lara is visiting in Tomb Raider 1. Legend? Now that's a different story. Okay! Ah, got it. Perfect. Uh, 
Okay, again we trigger one of these walkways. Now if I'm not mistaken, we just are missing um, the key of Atlas. Now how to get into his room? Ah, it should be that, because the fires are burning, the rooms we completed, the fires, uh, well, cease to burn pretty much. Uh, okay, now how do we get anywhere from here? Well, not like that. I really should have practiced more for this level. Okay, but, but I think we can still do it. They are actually really generous with the extra time in here, realizing just what a sadistic level this is. Uh, okay, it seems we can only reach Atlas from uh, the very top. Or... Oh, this looks promising as well. Hmm. But that slides down, yeah. You know what? Let me just see how quickly I can get to the top, yeah? I think we need a different perspective on things, literally. I don't think Lara will make that jump. So let me get even higher. You know, while I'm really sorry that my friend couldn't join me today on the stream and ask me trivia and existential questions, uh, seeing how much I struggle with St. Francis Folly, for the time trial purposes, I think that's a good thing. I would have messed up very badly. Okay. L let me take the, uh, the safe way up. Come on, Lara. No, you are still being uncooperative, right? Typical. Okay, then what about here? Thank you so much. Okay. Nice. And that's it, the Atlas. And then it's all about just getting it down, which shouldn't take as much time as getting up. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. There are plenty of opportunities for us to die here. Again, ledges on the side. Yeah, Lara always hits her head on the ceiling and doesn't grab the pole, and I always forget about that. Interesting. Ah, uh, one of the most memorable ones. I remember how cute and small this was in Tomb Raider 1. You pretty much just had to avoid, I think, one or two boulders by grabbing onto a ledge in the abyss, and that's it. But what made it more interesting was that there were gorillas chasing you here. Now, before we try and get the key, we should think about our escape path. And I agree, it was very cool, because it also introduced a very useful survival element to the game, like, you can dodge boulders by grabbing a ledge underneath. And this is a trick that's very useful in Tomb Raider 2 and 3 as well. So it's nice when a level design forces you to learn a mechanic <laughs> that kind of uh, accompanies you in uh, future installments. Okay. Oh, I love the statue. I believe actually Lara has a miniature version of the globe in her manor in the pool area. Oh dear god, no time for that. No! Punch it, Lara. Thank you! Whoa. Lara just didn't even flinch or look back, just started messing with the lever, like, all according to the plan. Ah, so I'm correct, she does have that in, in her manner. Good. I'm glad I remember that. But actually, that makes me think, do the events in Croft Manor, you know, when she walks in and finds the letter from Winston about the security lockdown, water not functioning, the statue not being brought. I wonder if that's Lara actually returning from the events of Tomb Raider 1, you know, after destroying the Atlantean Pyramid. Returning home and finding her manner in disarray and I think it would actually explain a lot On the other hand she retrieves her guns journal and grapple in her manner, so maybe it doesn't make perfect sense Ah the classic soundtrack yes, actually that would have been such a cool option I don't think they were really able to do that for some uh, 
licensing or ownership issues potentially. But I mean, I love the soundtrack uh, they created just for anniversary, especially the combat music. It's really something else. But yeah, uh, kind of the option to switch into the original one, that would be even an added replay value for those of us who enjoy nostalgia. Which I think is all of us, let's be honest. Okay, now to get down safely. Okay. Okay. And there we go. So we have all the keys. Lara, no, no time to play monkey now. We have all the keys, now we just need to kind of color match them. But it sort of makes sense, beside them being blue and uh, the the purple one being Hephaestus with the lightning energy. Then Atlas, the earth, the ground being green. And Democles, you know, trying to cut you to pieces in cold blood being red. And I believe we have did it uh, with almost five minutes remaining. Yeah, as I said, this level is very generous for the time trial. Perfect. Now, I have actually did uh, done a trial run of uh, the Colosseum, uh, completing the time limit yesterday. So I will kind of not repeat myself, and since we have limited time, I will go with Midas Palace, Tomb of Tihokan, and then Egyptian levels. Thank you. But no time to get complacent. Ah, uh, gorillas! Okay, now I have enabled the cheat showing enemy health bars, but the main reason I did it was not to see the health bars, but the rage bars. First of all, it allows you to understand what does each weapon actually do. It helps you get the feel of power, the game's mechanics, of how quickly enemies can get enraged, that sort of thing. So I feel like this is something that should be enabled by default. Okay, and if you let them cool down a little, you can just blast them to oblivion. Perfect. Now, here we are kind of in the central room of Pelas Minas, and I love that they put the whole statue in. In the original Tomb Raider, they pretty much had, well, memory space for just the hand of Midas, yeah? Now they actually put the whole thing in here. But I'll be honest, that made it a bit more mysterious. And generally I feel that the Tomb Raider anniversary levels, as compared to the original, are fairly straightforward and linear, like it's very difficult to get lost in them, yeah? Unlike in Tomb Raider 1. I remember that Palace Midas level was just a vast open compound of different places you could explore in any given order. Whereas here in this anniversary remake you basically get the choice between going left or right and one of those directions leading to the third door automatically. So again it's way more linear. Which I don't know, so, some people might prefer, some not. I would have enjoyed if uh, I could still get lost in the anniversary levels, which I'm unfortunately unable to. What I can, however, what can happen to me is getting killed. The combat is really tricky here. Okay. Ah, my favorite one. Yeah. Actually, this has a very interesting relic placement. You need to support one of these columns using a movable block that you find over here to stop it from collapsing using its broken ledge. It's just such an interesting uh, mechanism, I think. Okay. This was a very tough challenge in the original as well. Ah, thank you for the follow, Shined. Okay. I, I remember these were all identical columns with spikes surrounding them in the original Tomb Raider. However, in the small antechamber with the lead bar, uh, there was a gorilla that could very easily knock you off into the spikes. <laughs> okay. 
Now each time you come into contact with either of these pillars they start collapsing, which is interesting. It doesn't have like a global setting, all of them collapsing, just the ones you come into contact with. With the exception of the one on our left over there, because that leads to a secret. Okay. Oh no! Ah! <laughs> Serves me right for <laughs> looking at the chat. <laughs> okay. L let me just try this again. I, I think we should still be able to uh, to make it in time. And if not, then... Ah, come on. It would be the first level I would not complete in time during this extra life marathon. So, we'll see. Okay. But what I'm worried about will be the final challenge, the fire room in Anniversary. Oh, dear lord. I think I'm actually gonna have to use health packs in there. Oh, the camera is not helping. Thank you. Okay, there we go. And from here we can just get the lead bar over here. Perfect. This is the exit, right? Great. Now, I'm always paranoid, I don't remember correctly, but I think there's a gorilla welcoming committee whenever we return with a prize. Up, uh, yep, of course. And sometimes, these guys are so tough, they don't even flinch when you blast them with a shotgun. So even the shotgun re behavior is relatively unreliable. Now let's let him cool down. Ah, okay, okay. Yikes, jump scare, exactly. <laughs> uh, thankfully, I kind of expected them to appear, but if you don't, oh, good lord, you're in for a treat. Okay. Ah, this was such a impressive moment in the original game. Yeah, Tomb Raider 1's shotgun. Now, that thing was a utter amazing thing of beauty. The sound it made and how just how powerful it was. The shotgun in Anniversary is very unreliable and I guess that's kind of why I'm mostly using it, because I just really want to understand the weapon. And I have not managed to understand it so far. I want to get why, what strengths or benefits the shotgun in Anniversary could have. Oh no, you guys synchronized very well. It's actually nice to see a gorilla and a lion cooperate, you know? Okay. But now... Well, Lara again committed an insurance fraud because her health has refilled after that little accident. Okay, again, the gorilla didn't even flinch and survived just enough to get enraged, but thankfully the lion's isolated. I should make some, uh, like a British sports commentary to this. Unfortunately, I would be unable to really imitate that, but if I think like an Aussie Man Reviews sort of style, you know, with uh, Tomb Raider Anniversary's combat. Wow, that would be great. And there we go. After a brief moment of vandalism, Lara will receive her prize. Yeah, exactly. His commentary would have been awesome for this. He would definitely refer to Lara as Sheila. That's, that's just a given. Ah, and where's that, if I might ask? From Perth, I see. <laughs> OK. 
Okay. Oh, no, 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 no. Actually, you know what? Let me blast this one with a shotgun. I was panicking because I didn't want to waste the ammo, but now that I think about it, that is pretty funny. Okay. Now, this place is a bit tricky. I have died here a couple of times due to some unpredictability. Ah, thank you for being cooperative, Lara. Very appreciated. Okay, again, just like in the Lost Valley, we have a completely random piece of rope hanging from the ceiling where it's not really supposed to be. I think I've seen the one uh, about the robbers in Canada. It was this convenience store. A uh, young man and a woman uh, trying to <laughs> steal a couple of groceries. She tried climbing into a vent and then dropped from the ceiling. That was That was brilliant. She actually went all Tomb Raider style uh, onto the shop, yeah. <laughs> but reality has a way of letting us down, yeah. Didn't work out quite like in the movies. Yes, uh, the lady was just worried about good reviews. <laughs> and who knows, maybe she's used to this sort of thing in Canada, I don't know. Okay, and I think we've just about managed to get back to the statue area. Ah, uh, of course, the welcoming... No, not guns, Lara. Say no to guns, say hello to shotgun. Ah! Oh my god, again, they don't flinch. Okay, execution. Come on, come on, come on. Ah! Ugh. Okay, whew. Now, the music always tends to continue here even long after the gorillas are down, which is interesting. Unfortunately, we have to go all the way down and reclimb the statue, so to speak. Exactly, grenade launcher. However, I remember when I was doing my Let's Plays of Tomb Raider uh, 2 and 3 with the grenade launcher, I was not using it. Because for some reason, it messed up the kill count. If you blasted someone off with a grenade for a killing blow and they explode it, you would be awarded two or even three or four kills. And I was always trying to keep my in-game stats as accurate as possible. And that is the reason why I was not really using the grenade launcher. However, I was using it for enemies who can withstand at least one hit from it. But then I always finish them off with a different weapon. Now, I'm worried to trigger this room because... Ah, you'll see. Yes, either doubled or completely messed up. And... Now this is odd. <laughs> Unreliable mechanisms. Ah, yeah, Tomb Raider 4 grenade launcher. However, I can never figure out what the difference between... Well, actually... What was the purpose of the flash grenades in Tomb Raider 4? I, they never really seem to do anything for me. Now there's Croc the Crocodile. Let's ignore him. Uh, okay, Lara, can you outswim a crocodile? Okay, can you outswim a crocodile without an arm? Come on, Lara. Exactly, and also I can never figure out the difference between uh, the standard shotgun shells and the white shot shells. I tested it out on PC version, even on PS1 version. It took pretty much exactly the same amount of shots to kill anyone from various distances. It's just one box comes in red and the other in blue. I mean, that's a good enough incentive, I guess, but... Yeah, uh, these were kind of mechanics they didn't really finish through, I feel. You can shoot enemies off ledges. Ah, do you mean horizontally or vertically? Oh, you mean they pack more punch and they end up falling. Because uh, I was actually doing that, it was great fun. And uh, I feel like I've got the same results even with the standard ammunition. So, yeah. 
but maybe I, I need to test it more. Is this a good moment to scream no? Uh, we have less than three minutes. Oh, good lord, and that's the crocodile, Lara. Actually, no, I think a checkpoint is exactly what we need right now. Come on, croc, can you do it faster? Come on, have a snack. It's not often you get a British girl like this in Greece. Come on, come on. Well, I hope it was worth it. Okay, great. Checkpoint, insurance fraud completed. Let me just redo this. The timing of the flames is very deceiving, actually. Uh, even though long after they die down, Lara can still get hurt by them. This has always been a pain point for me. Okay. Now, I really am worried we might not make it, because even when we get the final lead bar, we still need to come back to the statue, we still need to convert them to gold, we still need to insert them into the correct slots, which is all gonna take a lot of time. But you know what? Enough with the defeatist talk. Let's just do our best. Whoa! That's not what I meant, Lara. But you know what? It might be necessary for the interest of time. We have a minute and a half. Okay. And there's still the crocodile lurking over there. <sighs> the old nemesis. No, 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 no. You, you will not grab Lara. You will not take away precious seconds from us. Christ, that was close. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. We have a minute. Uh, to figure out what alchemists of old were trying to do, convert anything into gold. Okay, let's see. I hope there will not be any more go- <laughs> Ah, never mind. Okay, okay, we have 40 seconds. That's actually not great. Uh, but I can use both health packs now, in case, I don't know, <laughs> some fall injury. Ah, oh, quickly, Lara, please. Okay, 25 seconds. I'm not optimistic, but I'm not pessimistic either. Uh, 20 seconds to insert them. Okay, that's that's great, right? That, that can be done. Oh my god. But if the cutscene will show this ah. okay okay 10 seconds 5 4 3 2 oh no during the cutscene <laughs> we have failed actually the moment that, that grade would have opened <laughs> that'd be the end of the level <laughs> Ah, this is this is funny. Okay, but this was really exciting. Okay, but this means every success we will cherish even more. Okay, so no, I have to live with my failures. I need to go to the next level. Ah, ah so very very close. Okay, Tomb of Tihokan next. I definitely have to make up for this. Exactly, it's like. It's always gonna bug me, you know? I think after the marathon is over, I'll just come back and replay it, just to be able to sleep at night. Okay. By the way, actually, I remember just how big the rats used to be in Tomb Raider 1. They were so very big. They were like attack dogs. They were absolutely enormous. Here in Anniversary, they have a bit more realistic size. Lara? Thank you, I was worried you were stuck. Okay, everyone's favorite, the cistern. I actually really like that level. Uh, it was just such an immensely satisfying feeling once it was figured out. However, I think the reason why many people hate the cistern was that uh, eventually you are given a lever and if you press that lever prematurely, 
uh, you will pay the price of having to redo about entire half of the level because of the water levels. So it's it's really evil, but I don't know, just mastering the level and not falling for its traps, it's such a rewarding feeling. But maybe I'm just saying it because I don't remember what it used to be like playing it for the first time. Maybe I really hated it back then, hard to say. But here in Anniversary, they removed... Uh, well, they combined the Cistern and Tomb of Tihokan level into one. And... Uh, so they removed a lot of rooms and areas from the cistern and also they just throw you into the final area of the Tomb of Tihokan, as we will see once we figure out this part. So there are actually a lot of challenges missing. I remember there were a couple of traps and cages and different doors and bronze, silver uh, and uh, a gold key you had to use to get anywhere. So that's all a thing of the past, unfortunately. Uh... I think Lara misses more crocodiles, right? After the previous encounter. Oh my god, I hear them already. What? You cannot climb over here? I chose the wrong side. Okay, we, we, we can still do it. Okay, let's not enrage them because they'll become invincible. This is one of my biggest gripes with the combat system in Tomb Raider Anniversary. Is that even though you have more powerful weapons, they actually end up enraging your enemies more than damaging them, meaning they'll just charge at you sooner. Which in a way is good, because it means you will finish them sooner. At the same time, if there are more enemies, you don't want several of them charging at you simultaneously, because uh, there's really no way to select which one you are gonna adrenaline dodge. Ah, the very boss fight, yeah. Actually, I'm really looking forward to it. It's interesting how they integrated uh, petrification and grapple into the boss fight. And also how they sometimes have a shared health bar. It's one of the more memorable ones for me. They could have just made it two center enemies, standard ones, but they were really creative. Ooh, okay. I do not recommend using shotgun against crocodiles at all purely because it takes three shots to finish them and it enrages them far earlier. Actually, at this stage, I can even start using my very favorite magnums. Because uh, you are able to find them in the Colosseum level, so yeah. Okay, and now we need to get rid of the water in that pit over there. Oops. Ah, so, so for you it's the best boss in the entire Crystal Dynamics trilogy, yeah? The Centaurs. Actually, I'll, I'll have to think about what my favorite would be. I didn't particularly like the boss fights in Legend. I think they did a far better job here in Anniversary. Okay, just easy does it. And he's enraged already. Wow, that didn't take long. Ah, yes, we understand. That tile triggers that mechanism. Thank you. Well, at least it gave the crocodile time to calm down. Whoa. <laughs> this is funny, actually. <laughs> the fight is being interrupted by Lara and the crocodile stepping on the tiles. Okay. Uh. I wanted to say nice, but this fight was everything but nice. Okay. And yeah, I remember the Japanese boss fight in Tomb Raider Legend. Uh, that was really interesting because it had the automated turrets on the upper ceiling. I think more than the boss fight itself, I love the soundtrack. Oh my god, Tomb Raider Legend had an amazing soundtrack. And the one that played during that boss fight was, wow, breathtaking. Okay. So, we freed up the wooden tile, and we opened the iron bars at the top. That's everything we need to do here. Now, there is more, actually. There is... Well, if I wouldn't have picked it up, there would have been a secret over here that you can also get, but that's open using an underwater lever. So, the area would have to be flooded. It's one of the first things that you can do. Actually, last things in the correct order, yeah. We haven't yet flooded the whole room. Just the pit over here. Uh, 
Okay. And now that we have the platform and the grate down, we can kind of try and grapple it to the balcony over there. Because that's pretty much the place we are trying to reach. Which is not really clear to a first-time player, I would imagine. Yeah. Maybe it would have helped if Pierre would be standing there and toting Lara as she's lost in the system or something. And the players would automatically want to get there to just punch Pierre in the face. That would be a good level design. Okay. And now we need to climb back... Oh, yes, of course, there's a very handy ladder over here. Now we have to circle around the area again, I'm afraid. Oh, that's fine. That's that's completely fine. I'm just worried we might not have enough time for the final boss fight, but uh, we'll see about that. The memories of Palace Midas' failure are still so fresh in my mind. Ah, we just have to do it. Okay. It's actually really interesting how, I believe, especially in the Peru levels, uh, sometimes remembering where items and secrets used to be in the original Tomb Raider helps you find them in Anniversary. And the same thing for Egyptian levels as well. I just have this instinct, due to my experience with the original game, telling me, go explore this corner or try to climb on top of that, and you genuinely find something. And it's wonderful how the designers of these levels reward you for that. It's really great. Okay. Perfect. And actually behind this column over here, uh, there's a lever which opens the underwater grate to the secret, but that's not a priority for us right now. My completionist soul suffers. Ah, curses. Okay, we need to pull it more. God damn it. Or even better, I'll shoot it? Nah, we don't have a good angle. But you can actually move these things even with your guns. Okay, but this should be much faster. Ooh, okay. And this is what I mean by the developers cutting large parts of the levels. The Tomb of Tihokan is represented by just this fountain, a tunnel, and, uh, well, the very final area. Woo, okay. 4 minutes 20, I think we should be fine. That is, if we don't fail during the boss fight. If yes, that's gonna cost us precious amount of time. But we still need to open the temple door. I was always really sad how the Sentas killed Pierre, even though he threw the piece of the Skion back to Lara. I was like, come on, that's so excessive, guys. But it was pretty damn funny, that's true. Maybe they do have a sense of humor. Actually, uh, the way the Tomb of Tihokan is designed here, it really reminds me, if any of you guys remember the beginning of the second Tomb Raider movie with Angelina Jolie, The Cradle of Life. I, I, I think the movie is horrendous, but I really liked the beginning, when they were exploring the underwater temple. And it looked exactly like the Tomb of Tihokan over here does, even the statues. I don't think that's a coincidence. I, I think the original Tomb of Tihokan might have inspired the movie, and then uh, that movie might have inspired the remake of in the anniversary over here yeah exactly it it looked very similar <laughs> the shark <laughs> honestly i'm i'm glad that shark scene exists because it's something you can always refer to that ah at least that movie didn't have the shark scene you know it's a useful reference point to have in life One of the Triumvirate, keepers of the three pieces of the Skeel, leader of the Chosen after the great betrayal caused Atlantis to be lost beneath the waves. You 
you see, instincts can be expensive, mademoiselle. Yours are going to cost you both pieces at the Skion. That's not a price I'm prepared to pay. Don't be absurd. No job is worth dying for. Yes, it is. So good question exactly, how the hell did Pierre get here? But it was actually nicely explained at the very beginning, he decided to follow Lara because she kind of proved to him she already found one piece of the skion. And that's the reason why he didn't kill her back in St. Francis Folly. So it's actually well thought out I have to say. Now how come that didn't work? I'm disappointed. Ah, shotgun blast. Oh, no, no, that was supposed to be my cool moment. Lara, god damn it. We don't have much health, but you know what? I think we'll have to redo this boss fight. Oh, maybe not. My hopes are up. Oh, that didn't do much. And I should not use Uzis. We are not supposed to have Uzis yet. Okay, but the second shield should be down and petrifying these guys should now be even easier. Thank you, Lara, for your cooperation. No, don't reload now. Ah, oh, good, one of these beasts is down. Okay, let me switch onto the shotgun. Uh oh. No, please no. <laughs> I have to say seeing 9096 petrified Lara was worth it. Okay. Lara, the shield. Or not. Lara, don't die. Okay, we have a minute to do this. So I'd best do it properly. Okay, this really reminds me of the God of War series, actually. Okay. Go on. Charge. Perfect. Now let me take the shield. Perfect. Thank you, Lara. Uzis, come on, blast him to pieces. Ah! Oh wait, I'm not supposed to be using them yet. God damn it. Okay, uh, hard to think. Oh, thank goodness for that. 17. Okay, but they don't have much health remaining. But there's still two of them, so... Uh... Oh, 10 seconds, not good. Mm, that didn't work. And we have failed again! Oh no! <laughs> ah, well, we did manage to finish off at least one of the centers. I guess that's a consolation prize. Yeah. This is the price we pay for, well, not finishing them off the first time around. I guess I could call this a cradle of life of a time trial run. <laughs> ah, Greece, you have not been good for me. Ah. Okay, anyway, we can go to Egypt and uh, forget about our shame in here. We're, we're immigrating to a new country to kind of forget about our criminal past. Okay, let's see. 
Thank you, I appreciate it. <laughs> I have not actually failed when I was practicing for this level, but I guess that's what always happens, you know. It usually goes well during the training, the practice, and, uh, well, the reality is a bit different. Ah, let me pick that up. Anyway, I really love the Egyptian levels. Not only because Egypt is a very favorite subject of mine and has been since I was a kid, but... Oh my god, I'm doing great. But uh, generally, I love how they look, feel, sound, everything about them. Yeah, exactly. Our kind of focus and attention is diverted between two things, so we tend to do more poorly. Okay. I was actually super excited at the time when Tomb Raider 4 was supposed to be released. Uh, that the whole game is going to take place in Egypt. However, I'll be honest, I did not like Tomb Raider 4 that much. Even though it should have been the perfect Tomb Raider game, however, it was so very cryptic and it combined elements of realism with elements of lack of realism that I was just completely and utterly confused and stuck most of the time. It was, without internet, not a pleasant experience for me to, to go through Tomb Raider 4. Yeah, you never did finish Tomb Raider 4, uh-huh. Yeah, I, I really can't blame you. I mean, I finished it, but I think it was in 2011 was the first time I finished Tomb Raider 4, so... <laughs> about uh, 12 years after it was released. Exactly. Like, I read the game manual, and uh, I even had a, a guide for the few, first few levels of the game, but it never really explained its new mechanics. But thankfully, then internet happened and I stumbled upon Stella's walkthroughs, so all was good. <laughs> okay. Shotgun is still a good weapon for these guys. As you can see, the rage bar is behaving differently. Now that was odd. One doesn't fill up after three blasts, the other one fills up after the first blast. But actually saying that there are a couple of enemies in the Egyptian... Lara? In the Egyptian levels that do not get enraged at all. It's as if they are scripted not to get enraged. Yeah, exactly. That was such a mind-blowing thing. Although I think it was mentioned briefly in the game manual. But, you know, when you're reading a whole manual and you are trying to absorb 180 pieces of information at the same time, you end up forgetting most of them. So yeah, it was mind-blowing. And I remember getting stuck in the Tomb of Seth level. Uh, the... kind of the first level with the your Egyptian guide holding the torch. And I could not get unstuck up until I talked to my cousins who had internet connection at the time and told me what to do. But we saw each other like once a year, so it was a long wait, let's put it like that. Yes, exactly. Manuals, and especially the kinds of manuals that will give you some backstory or lore for the game. I remember uh, back in the days uh, Blizzard was actually really good in this regard. Uh, they would basically attach a whole book into the video game to kind of read along with it, or before you even boot it up, and it was just such an extra added value. Uh, when it came to Tomb Raider manuals, I was mostly in it just for the pictures of Lara, let's be honest, who wouldn't want to see pictures of Lara? So that that's kind of why I was, you know, excited to, uh, to kind of unpack a new Tomb Raider game. And uh, I was a kid at the time, and I ended up cutting the box to pieces, you know, those um, kind of triangular box that the original games had. And I regretted it to this day, because if I had the boxes today, that would have been a real treasure. But instead, I was cutting it to pieces, and the screenshots that were always on the back of the box, I was cutting them out and putting them on my notice board in my room, kind of to see these vignettes from Lara's Adventures. So I completely destroyed the boxes, and now I just cry bitter tears when I think about that. 
come at me. Whoa. There should be another one, but thankfully they've separated. So it's easy to adrenaline dodge both of them. <laughs> you had to rebuy stuff for that, yeah. Ah, tier 1 gold edition. Actually, I've... Uh, oh, sorry, we need to repress the lever. I've never really got any of the gold editions physically. Like, when I heard Tomb Raider 1 and Tomb Raider 2 have expansion levels, I was like, no way, surely you're making that up. And no, that was a reality. Because we didn't really see that sort of thing in retails. So, I was mind blown. And many, many years later, I managed to get my hands on a collection of all Core Era and Crystal Dynamics Tomb Raider games in one box. And that's the first time I got a hint of all the expansion levels, and I was just... Wow! I mean, the return to Egypt in Tomb Raider 1, then the unfinished business with gauntlets and gauntlets of Atlantean enemies. And especially, well, Tomb Raider 2 is my favorite, but the Golden Mask expansion... Holy moly, that, that was incredible for me. You know, revisiting something you remember from the past, but seeing completely new levels. Okay, now unfortunately we need to move this block, and unlike the globe in St. Francis Folly, we cannot uh, shoot it forward. Ah, but let me pick this up, it might come in handy with the encounters that are up ahead. Okay. Oh, oh come on, that was a psych. Lara, please, jump up. Thank you very much. Now, please. Oh, close call. I, uh, the lost artifact was actually relatively tricky to get. I don't think it really had a proper... Uh, physical release or anything like that and I don't believe also there was at any point Tomb Raider 3 gold like it, it, I, I remember that uh, the lost artifact expansion levels of Tomb Raider 3 they were very difficult to get which is a shame because honestly considering just the original trilogy not all core era Tomb Raiders I think the lost artifact had the best levels of Tomb Raider 1, 2, 3 and all the expansion packs. I think they really maximize the potential. And I'm actually also one of the few people who likes Tomb Raider Chronicles. I understand the criticism and then, because it was getting pretty old by then. And I understand that selling it for a full price, even though it has very few levels, that's not something fans should be happy about. But as someone who, you know, bought the whole collection, the whole bundle of games, and wasn't really worried about the price, uh, I felt that Tomb Raider Chronicles just maximized the core era engine's potential to the fullest. Like, the creative stuff they did there, with the x-ray rooms, the destructible environments, the rope grapple gun, it was crazy. I was amazed to see the engine can still pull it off. Ah, the Roman Ireland levels. The Irish levels are usually something the fans are terrified of because Lara is so vulnerable. But yeah, it's very Resident Evil-ish, actually. Okay, and let me push this thing through. Hopefully this will work. Yay! And yes, uh, Tomb Raider 5 had, I think, the most advanced uh, level editor. Uh, Tomb Raider 4, I think, really introduced it, but uh, they did some updates in Tomb Raider 5. Okay, thank you for your cooperation, Lara. And up we go, perfect. Egypt is actually really evil, because even the simplest things are timed in here ledges, switches, buttons, everything. You need to be constantly on your toes. But maybe that's why I like these levels so much. It keeps the adrenaline high. 
Okay. Perfect, and up we go. <laughs> I actually have a bit of a love-hate relationship with the Assassin's Creed series. Uh, I, I really don't know how to put it. You know, I'm a completionist, and uh, I spend a lot of time with each and every one of those games. And, well, I'm not really up to date on the series. I'm currently playing the Unity on PC. After it's been already fixed and patched and everything. And I guess I enjoyed every single game, but there are just some things like the writing in the series that I sometimes like and sometimes get really upset about. So, I, I don't know, I, I just have this love and hate relationship. Sometimes I feel really, oh, come on guys, this is stupid. And sometimes I'm like, yes, perfect. W when you see your favorite historical character or just someone interesting, you know, like Machiavelli in the uh, Assassin's Creed 2 series. But I, I guess what I love about them and why I play them is the atmosphere. It's kind of the ultimate time-traveling fantasy. It's it's the best franchise for this purpose we have so far, I think. Whoa. Come at me. Oh, sneaky, sneaky. I had no idea there are three of them. Okay, you're gonna pay for that, just so you know. But at the same time, I'm gonna be brave and I'm not gonna shoot at you from up here, even though I could do that. Oh, ha, okay. And by okay, I mean everything but okay. Oh no, adrenaline do- It would be nice if you gave me time to react, but we're not friends, so I understand. Whoa! My goodness! And a new batch of Panthers was just released. You know what? There has to be a better way to do this. Let me see. Because we really are running out of time. Okay, actually, dodging works much better than jumping in here. Come on now. The problem is you cannot adrenaline dodge if Lara doesn't have her guns out, and that's very often, actually. Come on now. <laughs> oh my god, this is humiliating. Okay, let me see. Okay. Thank you for giving me time to react. Oh, okay, another batch. Oh, my goodness. And see, I don't feel I've really done anything different than before. It's just the animals decided not to kill Lara this time. But you know what? I'm going to be smart. I'm going to ignore you guys. Yeah. How's that for a change? Well, at least the nice music continues. That's something. And it's actually a remake of the original Tomb Raider 1 theme of Danger. I think a uh, theme that was initiated by Encountering Wolves. And I'm not sure if you guys had the experience with the PC release of Tomb Raider 1, or if you played it on a different platform, but the PC release for Tomb Raider 1 was messed up. It had no in-game music whatsoever. It didn't even have the background uh, track playing in the background. There were also no sounds in or no voices in the in-game engine cutscenes. That was the original PC release. And... Uh, it was... it had a very bad... Whoa! It had a very bad frame rate as well. Uh, and that was kind of the only commercially available, available one, at least over here, in this region. So, kind of my first real experience with uh, Tomb Raider 1, as it should have been, was by playing uh, the PS1 version on my PS Vita. Yes, I'm one of the rare unicorns who has PS Vita. And uh, when I played that, I realized the game has music. I was like, no way. I thought Tomb Raider 2 came up with music, you know? And I just missed this huge part of the game because of our messed up regional release. I, I, I was happy and angry at the same time. Like, how could they have allowed this to be released, you know? 
And then years later, when uh, I was recording my Let's Play for Tomb Raider 1, I have patched it up with a GLIDOS software. So it brought it a bit up to date. It, it improved the uh, sharpness of the image, it improved the frame rate and these things. So it controlled and played a little bit more like uh, Tomb Raider 2. Okay. We have six minutes ish. I don't know, but I'm fairly optimistic. I think once we get back past the scarab door, there is one puzzle for us to solve. And after that, we should be golden. Let's see. And thankfully, there is no Santa boss fight or slowly opening underwater grate to mess it up for us. Okay. So, yeah, now for the scarab door. We need to trigger the counterweight. Come on, Lara. Ah, thank you. And we avoided jumping on the columns entirely, which saved up a lot of time. And look at it. During these lengthy cutscenes, the time is flowing. Ah, it's like they want us to fail. Where's the ladder? Over here. Also, there is no fast way to descend a ladder in these games, unfortunately. You just have to put up with it. Okay. Ah, the final room! Awesome! So we have four and a half minutes to figure this out. Easy peasy. Now we have to push out the correct blocks to even be able to manipulate these mechanisms. But it's not without its danger. See what I mean? Of course these guys are here, but we're gonna be very cheap about it, because I'm angry at you. And as we pulled one of these blocks, this uh, monument has been released and we can actually check what the correct symbol is. Now for this, I'm gonna call it sword and cakes, okay? So we need to match the blue sword with a couple of cakes. Uh, right, there we go. So just to turn this twice. Now it's a bit tricky as not all of these uh, make the columns rise and reveal the correct answer to the puzzle. But you know you're uh, correct when you hear a clicking noise. And thankfully, the musical cues... Uh, ah, for a beer! <laughs> Interesting. The musical cues tell you when there's a panther inside. Now, I'm gonna call this a pony yellow ponytail and a shrunk monkey. Okay, so let's match the yellow ponytail with a shrunk monkey. I'm probably insulting some ancient Egyptian god or something. A penguin! I like that even more, yes. Okay, so another has risen, and this is a crane with a green cup. Yeah, okay, fair enough. So let's match the crane with a green cup, or green vase. Now, this means the final symbol, this feather, will have the blue vase. We just need to get the column to rise, maybe it's this one? Ah, perfect. So, oh, it already has been matched, wonderful. So we saved up a lot of time. Oh, oh, there's a panther chick. No, 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 you will not. Ha. Okay, look at his last pathetic attempt to try and prevent us from reaching the obelisk. Okay, great. So, this was much easier than the previous two Greek levels, even though we were very close. Now, let me just check the time here to ensure we have enough. Okay, we have around 35 minutes. So I'm pretty sure we can tackle the Obelisk of Kamun and see how far we can get in the Sanctuary of Sanctuary of Skion. Yeah, less cutscenes. That's true, actually. And Egypt, in general, has this feeling of isolation because, from a story point of view, there's really nothing going on between the beginning and the end of Egyptian levels. So yeah, that's true. Okay, Obelisk. Now, this, like St. Francis Folly, is a very non-linear level, which I appreciate. But at the same time, it's gonna make it very difficult for me to not lose myself, yeah? There are different orders and ways in which you can tackle the different challenges. Some are more time efficient than others. Oh, 
Oh, that's fine. Thank you very much for staying here. I hope you enjoyed it. And wish me luck. I will need it. <laughs> okay. And Obelisk of Kamun has the most evil traps out of the entire game. Yeah. So let's see if I've practiced enough. <laughs> <laughs> so much for that. Okay. There we go. Uh, I can't help it, but the sound Lara makes when she's crushed, it, there's something very satisfying about it. You know, it's so crunchy. Like having a bowl of cereals with milk, you know, and just crunching them in your mouth, that sort of sound. I try not to think about bones and sinew being crushed. Okay. Ah, thank you for the follow. Very appreciate it. Okay. So now we get have to get into the upper tier of, uh, of the obelisk. <clears throat> At least the intention was good, even though the execution was lacking. Thank you for the host. Okay. There we go. I remember failing Obelisk of Kamun time trial once due to the very final opening of the doors into the Sanctuary of the Skion. Kind of like what happened today at the Palace Midas level. So I really... Oh. Oh, thank goodness, Lara. I really hope that's not what's gonna happen today. But if yes, at least it will be pretty entertaining. Okay, and now... I actually really like this because by climbing in a smart way you can avoid the trap completely. It feels pretty great. Okay, and there will be a follow-up afterwards. Alrighty then. Yeah, again, the Egyptian theme of even the simplest ledges being timed continues. How can something so beautiful be so deadly? I'm talking about the Egyptian levels, but I guess the same applies to Lara. Yes, I'm talking about the polygon head Lara. Okay. And this swing, I'm actually going to take my time with. We do need a better momentum to really make the jump. At least we enjoy the nice colored mural, that's true. Okay. And there we go. Again, we are able to avoid it, just like that. <laughs> Top of the own, Lara. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Ah, oh, now I'm hungry. Oh, there it's seeping in the shadows. And see, this guy... Wait, first he doesn't get enraged at all, then he gets ranged completely. There's some strange shotgun behavior. Nah. Again, unpredictability continues. But by now we have learned to predict the unpredictability, so that's all fine. Ah, this is what I've originally confused the previous trap that crushed us with. Yeah, completely swapped up order. Yeah, so we can go both ways, but the lever is over there. Now I'm gonna keep the lower ledge intact for our return trip, even though it's not necessary. Okay. Now we will lower another one of these bridges. Perfect. And I think overall this level should be shorter than the Temple of Kamun, the previous one. But it's so much more difficult. There are some tough combat encounters and pretty much a pinnacle of traps in the anniversary game. Which is definitely gonna be fun to tackle. Good luck, Shinette, and I will not forget to raid you. I hope uh, Twitch will obey and it will work out fine. But yesterday I managed to raid Stella without any issues, so I'm hoping it will work. Take care now. Okay. 
Now, this is one of the two central rooms that I end up confusing a lot. But first, let's get rid of the nasties down there. <laughs> nice, enraged after one shot, but that actually helped us out a lot. Now, we have a choice of continuing down there. And no worries, it was a pleasure. We'll have to continue down there, or we can go up again. Now, I believe I made a mistake here a couple of times, so I'm gonna do the exact opposite of what my gut feeling is telling me to do. And instead I'm gonna climb all the way back up, because I think there just might be a trigger mechanism that we might miss later on. And if I'm correct, we should be able to complete the time trial. If I'm wrong, we will most likely fail. Let's see. Okay, no, alright, don't, no, don't. Thank you. Oh, this is very ill. Okay, we need to wait for the trap to retract because only that gives us enough time to do pretty much anything. Thank you for your cooperation. Oh, okay. Ah, right. <laughs> we need to swing back, uh, forward and back to really make it. Come on, how difficult can it be? Ah, nice. But this is much worse. It's difficult to see if the blades are outside or inside. Okay, I've never managed to do this without Lara being cut. However, occasionally she will not fall even after being cut. And that's the result I wanted. Nice. Very happy about that. Okay, we can swing forward, but to what end? Huh, should I do that or should I stay here? Hmm, now I'm not sure. I think this long corridor is where we want to go. If I'm wrong, that has just costed us a lot of time. Ah, perfect, this will lower one of the bridges. So there's only one more bridge remaining, and I think I know how to reach it. However, in here we are isolated, we can only go all the way back, yeah? Uh, I believe it is much better to instead reach the bottom of this room and continue on the lowest tier level, because I think there's a lever that drops the fourth bridge. And if, again, <laughs> I, I repeat myself, but if I'm correct, we have saved a lot of time. How to get back down safely? Ah, I know. Okay. Uh, safely, Lara. Good lord, was there a checkpoint? I'm not sure. Uh, kind of. Uh, okay. It's something. Maybe it actually would have been faster to drop into the pool of water and continue from there, but... Uh, then I might be confused via which way to continue. So instead, let's make the jump. Let's not finish a challenge incomplete. You can do it, Lara. Let's just go down a little to increase your swing momentum. Oh, thank you so much. It's actually difficult to see just how far it is to get an idea. And now we should be able to descend safely. All the way to the bottom. And there we go. Now, if I remember well, there will be a trap gauntlet. Yes, of course, there will. Okay, now, how do we want to go about this? As soon as the blades retract, let's just hope for the best. Oh my god, that's so close. If Lara will start losing her balance there, and you have to support her by pressing the interaction key, that's it. The crusher will get you in time. So we need to kind of make the jump and not lose balance, which is really easier said than done. Now, let's go around. And I don't think there's a lever for us to drop this drawbridge. Nevertheless, it will be over there. We have eight and a half minutes. Oh, not so bad, I guess. In case we'll find ourselves in a different area, let's pick up the uh, Ankh of Isis now. Reminds me of the Eye of Isis in Tomb Raider 3. <laughs> One of the meteorite artifacts. 
Yeah, you can actually crouch underneath, which is extremely handy. Just don't roll too far or I will fall into this pit. This is tough. Okay. Oof. Whoa. Okay. Ah, thank you for the hosting. Ooh. Uh, okay. Uh, as you can see, I'm now tackling the obelisk of Kamun. Uh, you know, the most vicious traps, enemies. Uh, the best Egypt has to offer. Uh, I think we need to go down here first, because that's where the lever opening the final drawbridge will be. Lara, that was unimpressive. Okay, just keep calm. I think this is a good emergency for a health pack, wouldn't you say? Okay, and you. Come at me, bro. Whoa. <sighs> Whoa! Ha ha ha. Yeah, so the idea was to grapple up here and shoot them from safety, but I, I guess I got punished for thinking I could cheese my way through. Fair enough. But now come the worst trap gauntlets of them all. This... I... Oh, God. Whoa! I can't believe that actually worked! Nice! Personal achievement unlocked. Okay. Quick, Lara. Okay. Okay, you didn't even lose your hands. That's always an advantage in Tomb Raiding business. Nice. Clean. Now way back is gonna be even trickier. Okay, the final drawbridge. And actually we can just reach it easily using a ladder from the pool, so it doesn't really ma matter how we re-enter the obelisk area. I can't believe that actually worked. Quick! Okay, Lara! Okay! Come on, climb up! Okay, you just lost your legs, but otherwise nicely done, I have to say. And again, no damage here. Wow. Whew. I think it's okay to be proud of myself at this point. Now, we can go all the way uh, and circle this area, but that would serve no purpose if we are not after a secret. So let's take a shorty cut back. And... Ah, okay, great. Yes, I, I think my plan is coming to fruition. This might have just worked. And now we will get back into the middle tier, which is where we want to be anyway, to reach the last artifact. Okay. Nice. And it was the drawbridge on the left, I think. Perfect! And now we have pretty much opened up a way into the Temple of Kamun area. It was such a mind-blowing moment even in Tomb Raider 1 that they even bothered to redo the whole area. To kind of make you visit and to think, oh, behind the door was the sanctuary of the Skion all along. Uh, let's just get a bit of a rebreather. In here you can actually see on the mural the four symbols, meaning the crate will open up only once you've found them. And actually each of the walkways uh, with a unique artifact has these symbols in a challenge room opposite of it. So you can pretty much map out which challenge opens up what in that case, which is really nice. Okay. There we go. I once failed a time trial because of this opening cutscene. But what's up ahead is a panther attack. We cannot let our guard down, even though we cleared up the previous level. And for Panthers, I'm thinking I'm gonna use Magnums. Much better choice. Or maybe we can... Oh, let's let's see if we can ignore them. That would save a bit of time. I don't hear them. Nor do I see them behind, so... Okay, cool. So we just need to put up with the final enemy. And that would be the Santa, if I'm not mistaken. Which, seeing this guy after the boss encounter in Greece, that might have been... Oh, shocking. Whoa, you have reach. I did not expect that kind, sir. No, you will not do that again. There you go. Goodbye. Good riddance. Now, it might be difficult to differentiate the slot for the Seal of Anubis with the Scarab, 
but the scarab has more rougher edges it's not as smooth as the seal itself so that's how you can tell the difference but in the original Tomb Raider I don't think it was really possible to see the difference I would have to replay it to be sure and there we go I think once the door opens uh, that's it yes well we are doing much better in Egypt than we did back in Greece now let me just check how much time we have left we have 20 minutes so I think it should be possible for me to just quickly run through the sanctuary of the Skion in time but if not then I will nevertheless uh, we'll see how far we can go in the stream but suffice to say there's no time to waste okay nice this switching works very well <laughs> Oh, this was close to perfect, I would say. So we have about 29-ish minutes to do this. Now, thankfully, I remember just which columns need to be turned. This should save up a lot of time. The idea is to align them according to the murals on the walls, yeah? But each of these columns turns the next two adjacent to it, which is a bit of a puzzle. One step forward, two steps back, so to speak. Okay, and now, actually I'm curious where we will end up climbing out of. Oh, good. It was purely an instinct telling me to jump back because I didn't see any other way to go. Oh, good lord. Oh, close. Okay. Okay, Lara. Thank you for your cooperation. Nice. Ah, here we are. Is there really any more significant, memorable, and an iconic moment in Tomb Raider 1 slash anniversary than reaching the Sphinx? And I mean the real Sphinx, not the one in the Temple of Kamun. Come to think of it, I believe Temple of Kamun was originally called City of Kamun in Tomb Raider 1. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Not sure why they changed it to Temple. I mean, it makes more sense. Sure as hell doesn't look like City. But in Tomb Raider 1, using your imagination, it might have. And back in those days, you had to use your imagination for pretty much everything. Okay. Hmm. Ah, this is the way. Got it. Now, there will be a couple of flying demons over here, but thankfully, since they are flying and cannot adrenaline rush us, they really don't have rage bars. So, we can just make them feel the wrath of our firepower. But I will not use Uzis yet, because we are not yet in Atlantis. I hope I didn't miss a lever over there. Nah, it seems to be empty. Very good. And there they are. And be careful, because these guys can... Whoa! knock you down. It's a good practice actually for what comes in the Great Pyramid level. Nice. Okay, Lara, you can do it. Yes, exactly, on top of the Sphinx's head over there. But I've kind of decided that I will not use them until, uh, until we would uh, kind of be able to get them. So after I will leave this room, I might consider using them, but maybe I'll save them up for Atlantis. We'll see. I, I find it more enjoyable to really use a uh, weapon type specific to a particular region. So in Greece, especially on the gorillas, I was trying to maximize the potential of the shotgun. Oh, nice, Lara. Thank you. Okay, and now we enter one of the two very similar, kind of the same idea of the challenge rooms. Now, these were not in uh, the original Tomb Raider, it was just a bit more jumping, sliding with pools and finishing off center enemies in very close spaces to get angst. This is, I think, far more interesting. I, I do like this way more. Okay. So here we actually attach ourselves to pillars that we need to bring down. However, we cannot just bring down all of them in any 
order we see fit because we actually have to use their elevation sometimes to reach the other ones. So it's a really nice puzzle. Okay, but if you, you know, make a mistake, so to speak, you can always just grapple them back to release the locking mechanism and reset them, so it's fine. No permanent damage done. Oh, okay. So here we will use this one to reach the one on the left, yeah? But by the time we reach the top, it has already submerged a lot, so we need to get to the side, let it rise up again, and on and on, to reach the ledge on the side. Okay. And this one, I believe we can just bring down. I understand that feeling, Jeffrey. Uh, <laughs> kind of the re reason why I tackled these levels was that, uh, yeah. Uh, at the time I was playing it, I, w I was stuck in a hospital, so I pretty much had nothing else to do. I was like, okay, I... I, I, I have to tackle them, you know, I have to do it. And I was trying over and over and over with pretty much nothing else to do. But under normal circumstances, it's so intimidating to try and time trial run a level that you don't remember, that you just feel like doing pretty much everything else, yeah. But actually, maybe watching this stream will help refresh some of that memory, I hope. Okay, and for the final one, here we go. Perfect. Ah, welcome back, Shinette. Let me actually check the time to make sure I will not forget myself. We have 13 minutes, which is less than the time we have for completing the level. Now, I don't think we will manage to finish it, but... Um, Feel free to even remind me in the chat when it's like three or two minutes to go, so that I will not forget. Okay. Now to get up. Ah, that's fairly straightforward. There we go. Yeah, actually, how many of our hours of sleep did you guys get? Ah, that's good. Same here, actually. I wasn't sure, you know, how I'll pull it off, because... Uh, here in Slovakia it was relatively early, I had to get up to set everything up on my uh, backup device, as this is not the same streaming setup as yesterday, without my friend. But uh, yeah, so far it's working out nicely, and I needed that energy boost. Oh! Okay, down you go, you beast. Ah, yeah. Maybe we should have a separate schedule for taking naps, you know, all of us to synchronize. <laughs> okay, now I'm very anxious about this because there will be another pair of flying -like demons soon. Huh. Ah, okay, this looks doable. But again, they have no rage bar, so we can just blast them to smithereens. Ah, 13 hours ahead of Stellas, yeah. For me, uh, I think compared to the New York time, it's around 5 hours, so that's not that bad. So I have it easy. Oh, oh, good thing I looked. Okay, and ready your guns, Lara.
Oh no. Come on, let go. Ah! <laughs> it's so funny to watch actually. Okay, I think we can, yeah, slide from here. Ah, great. And safely down we go. You know what? I'm gonna be happy if we'll manage to at least leave this room in time. Let me check the time again. Nine more minutes. Okay. Whew. Uh, if it's not too much bother, yeah, uh, we, we could actually see if I'll manage to beat it in time, uh, but it, it, oh, <laughs> uh, but you know, if you want to start at a strict schedule so as not to have confused viewers, you know, because some people will check the schedule and they will not see you streaming, so they might be worried a little, so uh, may, I, I think we should just keep to the schedule, yeah, and uh, no need to wait for me. I will finish the level on my own and I'll let you know in the chat afterwards if I manage to beat the time trial or not. Huh. Okay, let's deep dive. Woo! Okay. Now, huh. Hmm. Uh, okay, uh, okay, I, th I think I got it figured out. So first, let's trigger the one to the right, then still keep this one untriggered to use the ladder on the side and trigger the remaining ones. That could potentially work. Let's see if I'm right about that. Actually, a lot of the time for this level is spent just dragging these things down. Okay, perfect. Nicely done, Lara. And uh, okay, I hope this will work out. Mm. Okay, l l let's be safe rather than sorry. Perfect. Uh, same time here, uh, Jeffrey. Yeah, it's soon to be 10 a.m. where I'm at. Okay. This is the third down. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to check the time like crazy. We have seven more minutes. Okay, I'm pretty sure we'll manage to leave the Sphinx room. There we go. And onto the platform with you, Lara. And here we have a lovely grapple point for us to get through here. So it's all well thought out. It's like the game is reading my thoughts. Guys, I think I made a terrible mistake. I just realized I forgot to pick up the ank from the previous obelisk room. I, I literally just walked away from there once the obelisks have risen. <laughs> so, let's see if I can retrace my steps to the other one. Because I thought to myself, yeah, we are... Um, uh, me, I, I don't remember ever picking up the ank and encountering the enemy inside, so... Yeah, I need to focus more on the game. No matter, I'm just gonna pretend it's part of the plan to keep the suspense levels high. Because I'm such a pro gamer. Uh, okay. But this is what often happens to me even when I'm uh, 
recording my Let's Play videos of Tomb Raider games, I get lost in the thought, not be fully aware of what's going actually on, and I do much worse than when I'm just practicing the levels in silence, but I think that's normal. But it's a good training for the mind, that's for sure. Uh, Lara, will you survive this fall? Nice. Okay, that saved up a bit of time. Now there's an enemy, but there will be an awkward camera angle. Which will make us vulnerable. Ah. Oh, look! He cannot get enraged. Interesting. But thankfully, we can reach the previous obelisk room with a shortcut. I know that much. We just have to walk around the Sphinx to reach the obelisk pool area. So it's not like we have to redo the challenge or something like that, yeah? But it's still a lot of backtracking. Because these uh, doors open at the bottom of the Sphinx on each side. It's like they knew this is gonna happen to some idiot like me, so they put them there. But first, the centaurs. And since there's two of them in a relative distance, let's use magnums. Oh, I love the music here. Ah, I think he's stuck. Oh, come on. That's for me showing pity on you. Okay. Oh no! The grate closes when you use the exit! <laughs> I had no idea! <laughs> okay, so... Um, <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to make it, I'm afraid. Serves me right for not paying attention. But this is great, this actually feels like the uh, proper Tomb Raider, you know? When you make a mistake like this, you properly pay for it. No checkpoint is gonna save you, so... It's it's awful, but it's a great tomb raining moment. Okay, exactly. Every day is a school day. Uh, okay, so either way, I'm gonna retrace my steps there, uh, and I will in a minute and a half stop my stream. Uh, I will raid your channel, and I'll let you know if I manage to beat the time trial, which I sincerely doubt, considering the big room that's still up ahead, but we'll see. A little optimism never killed anyone. I never thought about it, actually. Only the Tomb Raider community should have the privilege of raiding each other's channels. It just makes sense like that. Okay. <laughs> okay, I will stop the stream here. And let's see, hopefully the rating will work. Now, I believe I have your ID written down. Shinet Croft. Okay, let me give the command. Ah, the crunchy sound. Now I need my breakfast cereal. Okay, so raid... Okay, let me go when you're live, and uh, I have this ready. And thank you guys as well, yeah. Unfortunately, it was logistically not possible to, this, to do the same setup like yesterday, but, you know, that just made the yesterday one way more special. Okay. Let me actually check the website. I still keep getting the 522 error, unfortunately. So, yeah. Whoever is behind this is very determined to bring the site down. But anyway, so that's it from my side. And yeah, um, <laughs> I'm super excited to see your stream, Shinat. So, talk to you soon. Bye-bye, guys.